In this video I'm going to illustrate how tiles can be arranged as seen here and then saved as tile format files which can then be read with the data at a later time so that the display returns to the state that we see here. To illustrate how a display can be set up in this form I'll open a file without any previous display state. I can do this by the file menu and using a selection from the recently used file list. The default display state is to select the VAMAS blocks in the first row of a VAMAS file and these are then displayed one per tile in a scroll list. So this scroll list here represents each one of these VAMAS blocks that are selected in the right hand side and if I select one of these tiles you can see which one it is by the movement of the colour that is associated with the selected tile. What I need to do is to display a single survey spectrum rather than having a scroll list and I can do this by double clicking on one of these survey VAMAS blocks so wide 5 when I double click it appears as a single tile no scroll list because it's the only one that was selected and I can now add tiles to this tile by dragging out boxes so if I drag out a box here and then use the options menu and say insert tile I've created one tile by giving focus to the survey spectrum dragging out another box and then saying options insert tile so now we have two tiles that are associated with this particular tile that is now displaying the survey spectrum and to display a nitrogen 1s spectrum in one of these tiles I must select the nitrogen 1s spectrum and give focus to the tile in which I would like to display the nitrogen 1s and then use the toolbar button that is overlay F2 so now I've got the nitrogen 1s displayed and I can do the similar actions for the carbon 1s using the overlay F2 button again now each one of these tiles represents a display tile that can be used for performing various actions such as peak fitting or adding annotation to data so let's add some annotation to these data if we select the annotation dialog window then the VAMAS block that will be acted upon is the one with this bar across the top the blue bar indicates this is the active tile so if I wanted to add some text to this specific VAMAS block that is selected over here with the carbon 1s then I might go to the text property page and I have already entered C1s high resolution so this text when applied will act on the VAMAS block and will appear in this particular tile now I'm going to illustrate a new feature and this is word wrap text and when the annotation history is active there are now two boxes that are associated with the text the first one positions the left hand side the second one positions the right hand side of text and the distance between these two will determine the amount of text that can be drawn in one line so if I reduce the size of this by moving the right box towards the left box then we can see here that it says carbon 1s high resolution and it's printed over two lines if I wish to move the text as is then if I hold a control and the shift key down at the same time as I try to move a box then both of these boxes will move together so this is how we position the word wrap text if I wish to add text to another one of these VAMAS blocks corresponding to say to this survey spectrum then what I need to do is give focus to that survey spectrum and then enter a string that will be appropriate for these data so maybe I want to say the nitrogen 1s peak low resolution so here's my text I've got word wrap and I also would like to draw a line associated with the word wrap text I'm going to associate 
this text with a particular peak in this survey spectrum. So rather than having the display position for the annotation, I'm going to select data. So this means that all the positions that are used to define the annotation position will now be relative to the intensity and also the energy. So when I press apply, I end up with text and a line. Go to the annotation history. And because I have a line, I now have three move boxes. So if I point at one, hold my shift and control key down, I can move the text and the two limits. And if I want to position the pointer to the data that I'm interested in, I can do it by moving the individual box that is the third one that represents the end of the line. But at this point I'm going to rewind to when I first created the text. And as you can see at this point that although there are three boxes, one of them is partially covered by one of these tiles that have been inserted to let the nitrogen on S be displayed. Now this is a problem if you can't see the boxes that you need to adjust to move text. So what you can do, giving focus to the main window, if you do control A, what happens is that the tile display, all the drawing instructions for the graphs and the labels etc have now been placed on a clipboard which can be used to reinstate the display as we see it within this session of CAS XPS. And the idea is that if you need to see the annotation on the survey spectrum, what we can do is simply display the survey spectrum only. And then we can make the adjustments to the text. And the position of the line. Maybe move these down a bit holding the control and the shift key down and once I'm happy with this I can then do control Z and it will bring back the display so I've been able to see all the necessary space that's required to position the annotation on the survey spectrum and then go back to the display that I would like to keep for my data in my report then finally, I will save the VAMAS file. When I say save as, you just give it a slightly different name. I save the file, and if I look now, I see the file that I just saved is this VAMAS file here, and then there's another file that is an SFF file, and this is a saved tile format file that describes the display at the point when I save the VAMAS file. So that's one way of saving the display state between sessions. There is another way which is to use an option on the file menu that says save tile format file and then I can choose to add a tile format file and this time it'll be a TFF file the same format as an SFF file. The SFF file is just saying this is the saved one with the VAMAS file, but you don't need to use the same name. You could give it any other name. So this could be, say, figure one. So if I've prepared a figure one for a report, I can now save this TFF file and it will have the information that lets me display the data once again in this format. We close the annotation and then ultimately I would like to take through this display here through the clipboard and display it in say Word. So now I've got the display as I saw in CASA XPS saved as an enhanced meta file, a vector drawn version of the graphics that will be interpreted by Word or Excel or PowerPoint so it can be displayed in other documents.